I'm the one who dug this grave But you called my name You called my name I thought that I was too far gone For everything I've done wrong Yeah, I'm the one who dug this grave But you called Welcome. I'm so glad that you can join us today here at Our Saviors in Hastings. Just a note before we begin, uh, we're recording as we usually do in the middle of the week um, in preparation for Sunday. And we've got some work, wonderful work going on to preserve our stained glass windows here in the sanctuary. So we've got a few workmen outside doing some different work. And if you hear a little something odd occasionally here and there during the uh, service today, just know that good work is being done to make sure that our windows are safe and um, all the frames are taken care of so that they can continue on uh, blessing the congregation into the future. Then I also want to uh, wish all of you who mother a happy and blessed Mother's Day. God uses many different women in the life of children, both when we children are young and when we are old, to mother and nurture and mentor us. Our prayers are also with those of you who could not have children or who live in grief over the death of your child or those of you who are grieving the loss of your mother. We treasure all of you and we pray God's blessings upon you today in this day that is set aside for you. Now as we begin our service, let us pray. Lord God, mothering God, Draw us together as sisters and brothers in you, that we may grow in our faith and in our fellowship. Amen. Now we're going to take some time to confess our sins to the Lord, both communally, corporately, as well as I'll give us a little time uh, to do that uh, individually. And if you want a little bit more time, you can hit pause, and then you will receive uh, forgiveness by hearing the words of our Lord. Let us confess. Source of love, you call us to love one another as Christ has loved us. But we fail as often as we succeed. Hear now our confessions of sin. O oh Lord, to love another can be a difficult thing. You promise us joy if we give ourselves to love. Yet we cling to hurt that robs us of the offered gift. You desire to set our hearts free from the chains that bind us. Yet we hold tightly to familiar paths, actions, and words. Forgive us our sins, O Lord. Amen. Now hear this good news. In Christ's love, we are loved. In Christ's promise, we have hope. In Christ's grace, we are saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and you are set free. Amen.
Our scripture for today is from 1 John chapter 5. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know him, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you that you walk through this life with us and that you give us one another, that we may be community, fellowship, that we may be church. Amen. In the early and mid-90s, when I worked as a canoe guide at Wilderness Canoe Base, each of the buildings had a name. Some were named for animals, like running deer, and other buildings for their location, like the cabin that sat 50 feet from the border of the Boundary Waters. It was named Borderline. And still others' names told you what their purpose was, like one storage building was named La Cache, which in French is the storehouse. And the main lodge, which sat amidst a grove of pine trees on top of a granite ridge, was named Pine Cliff. I spent a lot of time my first summer at Wilderness, not only learning the names of the different cabins and buildings, but also for fun trying to figure out why they were named as they were. Yet there was one building's name that did not make sense to me for a long time. It was a little building down by the canoe beach that stored paddles and life jackets. The building was named Koinonia. The word Koinonia is Biblical Greek for Christian fellowship or communion with God and other Christians. Thus koinonia is the foundational web of relationships from which grows Jesus' body on earth, the church. So koinonia defines Christian relationships as both earthly and spiritual simultaneously. A koinonia relationship is not simply friendship between humans, but more so relationship between humans whom are bonded together by their faith in Jesus. Yet the definition also pointed to koinonia being deep relationship with God in Jesus that includes other people as well. Thus koinonia is most usually translated as Christian fellowship. Now I share all of this because over the, these past four weeks, we've been reading through the book of 1 John each Sunday morning as we've also been reading from the Gospel of John. The themes that the writers of 1 John, that the writer of 1 John has dealt with, are the other side of the coin from the themes which are dealt with in the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, the author was trying to help people to see that Jesus was much more than simply a good human and wise rabbi who wanted good for the people of Israel and the world. Now, in the Gospel of John, the writer was preaching of Jesus' divinity and so the eternal benefits given to the world through his crucifixion and resurrection to life. In the book of 1 John, though, the author is emphasizing the exact, exact opposite, that Jesus was also truly human and that he was preaching of the earthly benefits of his teaching and love for us today. So the Gospel of John emphasized the man Jesus as being also fully God, and 1 John emphasizes Jesus, the Son of God, as also being fully man. You see, we humans seem to swing from one end of the pendulum to the other in our beliefs and actions concerning Jesus. Either we focus upon his divinity and what it means for us eternally in our salvation from sins, or we concentrate upon Jesus' humanity while trying to live a good life by forming his teachings into rules by which to live. Either way, the focus is wrong. 
Meaning our focus seems to wind up being upon ourselves and what we can get from Jesus. Rather, our focus needs to be upon the koinonia formed with Jesus and our earthly neighbors with whom he calls us into love. Do you remember how I shared that I did not really understand why someone had named the canoe and life jacket shed koinonia? Well, it's because I don't think that I really understood the concept of koinonia for a long time. Koinonia, Christian fellowship, is all about learning to synthesize and live in Christian relationship on two different planes of existence, or in two different ways, simultaneously. Living in koinonia means we are living spiritually with Jesus in the kingdom of God, while at the same time we are living physically with our brothers and sisters in Christ here on earth. So as an example, let's think about the two things that were stored in the koinonia building at the camp. Paddles and life jackets. The two essential items needed, besides a canoe, for a canoe trip. The paddles are the very items that each person needs to make the trip possible by being the means by which the travelers move their canoe across the water. It takes teamwork to paddle a canoe safely and efficiently, and to do so, the paddlers need to learn to relate well to one another. In fact, the best paddled canoes are often paddled either by spouses or siblings. My wife Emily and I are a good team in a canoe, although I will admit it took a few miles of paddling to create our teamwork. Yet the other person with whom I paddle well, very well in fact, is my younger brother Jonathan. He and I can make a canoe leap through the water when we want to. Again, it took many hours to achieve our synchronicity. It takes miles and hours spent paddling together to learn how the other person approaches any obstacle or type of water condition. To be a good paddling team, you almost have to have a dual physical and spiritual connection to one another, like siblings and spouses often do. The other item stored in Koinonia had a completely different purpose, life jackets. At Wilderness Canoe Base, we were taught to call them PFDs, personal flotation devices, but more often than that, we often called them life jackets because the entire reason for their existence was to try and save the lives of those who ended up in the water when a canoe overturned. So when paddles weren't used correctly or someone leaned too far out and the canoe flipped, which does happen, or the weather conditions overwhelmed a canoe and its paddlers and they capsized, the PFD would save lives from drowning. Whereas the paddle was meant to be used in coordination with another person or persons in a canoe to journey, the life jacket was used by the individual for salvation from death by drowning. So in a way, the paddle and PFD might represent the two main aspects of Christian fellowship, or koinonia. The paddle represents our human relationships and the power koinonia gives us to move through life in support of Christian community, like the church. And the PFD, or life jacket, represents our relationship of faith in Jesus. As 1 John 5 says, God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son, Jesus. Through our faith, we understand that Jesus, our salvation, our life jacket, saves us from our mistakes and bad decisions, like a life jacket saves the paddler from their mistakes and bad decisions. And so Jesus and our brothers and sisters in Christ, our PFD and paddles, represent the koinonia we need for our lives. Christian fellowship is the basis for our life together right here as the church. Oddly enough, this basic fact is something that we sometimes forget here in the church. And so life becomes harder or more lonely because we forget Jesus' teachings of loving God and one another, the foundations of koinonia. Perhaps we find ourselves solely focusing, solely focusing upon needing our life jackets, Jesus' salvation, which buoys us up in the waters of life. Yet then we find ourselves floating alone without a paddle and partner, 
nor the ability to go and accomplish all that Jesus calls us to do with our lives. Conversely, we can concentrate so intently upon our human relationships that we forget that the new life that Jesus gives us is the basis for our community. And we find ourselves zipping over the waters of life with no true purpose, having left our life jackets lying in the bottom of the boat. Let us remember what we have learned from John and from 1 John these last weeks. Jesus is our salvation and life. Whoever has the Son has life. And as we live in the eternal life that God gives us through Jesus, already here on earth, as we are given each other sisters and brothers in our faith, we sisters and brothers are a community of faith, of love, and of hope because of our shared Lord Jesus, the Christ. Eternal life is not simply to be lived someday after our earthly deaths. No, Jesus calls us into life right now, both with God and with each other. Take to heart John's words and then live them out in our lives as Christian koinonia here in this place and in our lives. John wrote, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. That, my friends, is the definition of koinonia. Let us learn and grow in Christian fellowship. Amen.
Let us share our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people in need. O oh Christ, we thank you that you give us one another to grow in communion and fellowship with as we grow in faith and communion with you. Remind us each day that your love is given anew every day and that we can give your love and receive your love in koinonia all of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, koinonia does not simply exist between us here in this place, but it can with our brothers and sisters around the world. Today we pray for our companion congregations in Tanzania, at Ilambalole and Ihomeni. We trust that you walk with them as you walk with us. Help us walk together, shoulder to shoulder, bega qua bega, with our sisters and brothers in Tanzania and around the world, that the world which needs your love so desperately may experience it through our care and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, dear Lord, we've been praying for peace for weeks, and we need your peace all around the world, from Gaza and Israel to Ukraine and Russia, from Sudan to Yemen and Myanmar, as well as in our own nation, in our own communities. Peace does not reign, Lord, because of the way that we look at one another and we treat one another, not in love, not in koinonia, but because we distrust one another, because we've been taught to hate one another. So I pray, Lord, for your peace, your peace that surpasses all understanding, your peace that starts with forgiveness and continues with hope. Please, Lord, be present in our world be present with our leaders, elected and uh, hired, all those who lead us, Lord. We pray that you speak into their hearts and minds, that uh, they may work towards peace, towards good governance for all people. Not governance for themselves or just those who support them, but for all people. Be with us in this time of elections and politics, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, so many are in need of your healing presence. We ask that you bring them healing and strength in their body, mind, or spirit. We pray for all who are sick, all who are suffering, those who are recovering from an injury or surgery, those who are battling disease. We ask that you be present with Joyce, Michael, Randy, Julie, John, Bill, and all of those whom we hold close in our own hearts. We ask that you walk with those who are lonely or depressed and meet the needs of those who are having emotional crises. Also give comfort and peace to all who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Provide all mourners with your love and with your solace in their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Jesus, lead us out into the world that we may be your people of love and peace. Help us to grow in koinonia with one another and with you, that the world may come to know you and your love. Into your hands, gracious God, we give all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and love. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We want to thank you for all that you do for our ministry and for the God's ministry here through um, our Savior's Lutheran Church in Hastings. Be it the gifts that you give online or in person, or those of you who are able to volunteer in some other way. Or maybe it's in your community, helping to um, be the hands, the heart, and the feet of Christ. We do... Um, very much welcome any uh, offerings that you give in support of this online worship ministry or any of the other ministry that takes place here or through our saviors. Uh, if you do want to give, uh, we encourage you to um, visit us through the website, osel.org, uh, and uh, discover the ways that you can give. Uh, at this time, let us um, give a word of thanks for all offerings that are given. We thank you, dear Jesus, for all that you give us in our lives. Help us to offer back to you and your work here on earth a portion of what we have received. Bless our offerings for your people and your ministry. Amen. Just have a few announcements. Um, as the church education season winds down, um, we're moving into summer. And there's a lot happening this summer, but it's all different. We do encourage you to um, keep in your prayers. The children that will be going to Bible camp, the teenagers that will be um, participating in our two um, senior high servant trips, one to Kansas City and one to Boston, as well as to keep in um, prayer our Tanzania team that is heading to our companion churches at Ilambalole and Ihomeni in the Aringa Diocese of Tanzania. That team will be leaving uh, the middle of uh, June. We ask that you uh, pray for safety and health and for um, the building of relationships as we walk bega qua bega, which means shoulder to shoulder with those brothers and sisters in Tanzania. If you would you like to lend support to this team and its ministry, uh, you can earmark um, offerings for support uh, to the Tanzania team. We also want you to keep in prayer all the seniors who are graduating, both from high school as well as um, college and university or graduate programs, as well as all the um, other students who are ending their school year. It's going to be a stressful time as people are ready to either finish their school careers or finish their years and study for tests and finish their papers and all of that. And it's not just the students, but it's the teachers and administrators as well. So we invite you to keep all of them in prayer. We are holding a baccalaureate service here on Sunday, June 2nd at the 10.30 p.m. Uh, a.m. service. We do not have a 10.30 p.m. service. 10.30 a.m. on that Sunday um, in honor of our uh, 2024 senior high graduates. Uh, there's a lot more happening. Please visit us at our website, osel.org, to find out more. But at this time, let me leave you with the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and we welcome you back every week. Bye-bye. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. Calling, oh sinner, come home. 
Why should we tear it when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly tender, where Jesus is calling, calling, oh sin, come home. Oh, what a wonderful love He has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, He has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Calling, oh sinner, come home. Yes, he's calling, oh sinner, come home.